think the Iranians Senator. have a different view. Senator Lee. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I've got a uh, number of questions regarding the military implications of this deal. There's one other issue I want to follow up on, though. Uh, Secretary Kerry, why isn't this a treaty? And, and as a treaty, why isn't it subject to advice and consent with two-thirds of the Senate concurring? Well, there are many reasons uh, why, Senator, uh, not the least of which is that we don't have diplomatic relations with Iran. This is uh, a, uh, a situation with a multilateral agreement with many countries, and you don't normally negotiate a treaty in that kind of context. So it's a political agreement, uh, and uh, we believe that the leverages that are in it through the snapback of sanctions, through the oversight and the inspections, are very powerful incentives for Iran's compliance. Okay. Well, I, I would note that there's nothing in Article 2, Section 2 that limits the definition of treaty along the lines of what you described. And in fact, nothing in your definition of the term treaty on the State Department's own website limits it that way. And it defines treaty as a formal written agreement between sovereign states or between states and international organizations. It doesn't limit it to the fact that it has to be between two. I don't think that's a, a, an adequate answer, but um, uh, w w we'll move on. Uh, General Dempsey, presumably one of the weapon systems that Iran is likely to acquire and that Russia has indicated a willingness to sell mm -hmm. would be an advanced air defense system. Can you describe for us what kind of impact this might have on U.S. military operations? For example, a hostage, uh, hostage rescue operation, uh, reconnaissance operations, and so forth? Yeah, there's no question, Senator, it would make it would make application of the military option to reduce their nuclear capability more difficult and and but not impossible, but more difficult. Thank you. Now, um, Wendy Sherman, uh, the chief negotiator uh, for the United States during these talks, stated in February of last year of 2014 to the Senate Foreign Relations Committee that Iranian ballistic missiles uh, uh, were, quote, indeed going to be part of something that uh, would have to be addressed as part of a comprehensive agreement, close quote. Now, uh, Secretary Kerry, at the time, was Secretary Sherman referring to lifting the U.N. embargo on ballistic technology when she made this statement to the Foreign Relations Committee, or did the United States intend to include restrictions on ballistic missiles in this agreement? Well, it does include. In fact, it's under Chapter 7 uh, and enforceable, uh, therefore, under the United Nations, Chapter 40, Article 41. And there are restrictions uh, within this agreement. Uh, and I would also comment on the earlier question that the, the defensive uh, weapons are not covered by the embargo. So the S-300, for instance, from Russia is not covered anyway. I, I do have to ask, ask another question, uh, Secretary Kerry. Given the fact that one of the problems that we've got with Iran, one of the reasons why we're so concerned about Iran getting nuclear weapons, has to do with the fact that this is a roguish state, a state that has made uh, not only threats, but taken aggressive actions toward the United States and her allies, has taken, uh, uh, made threats to wipe Israel off the map, for example. There are real reasons why we don't want them getting nuclear arms. In light of the fact that that's the biggest reason why we're so concerned, why we're we're willing to enter into negotiations to possibly lift sanctions against Iran, giving Iran a big, a big economic benefit. Why? why? Why on earth didn't we insist as a condition precedent to getting any deal at all that Iran, for the love of God, cease and desist from its terrorist ambitions, cease and desist from making comments like that it wants to wipe Israel off the map, cease and desist from undertaking and funding acts of terrorism against the United States and her allies? Well, as was mentioned earlier, I said, look, it would be great and ideal if one could negotiate that. I'm not sure how long it would take. And given the imperatives that we had with respect to Iran's 19,000 centrifuges, 12,000 kilograms of weapons fissile material equal to 10 to 12 bombs already, their mastering of the fuel cycle, and their near imminent finishing of the Iraq reactor, which would have produced weapons-grade plutonium at the rate of two weapons a year, we felt that we had to keep this targeted on the greatest threat of all that you've just defined, which is the potential of their having a nuclear weapon. And if indeed they're, they're meaning to translate their slogans of death to America, death to Israel into policy, then getting rid of the nuclear weapon is everybody's first imperative here. So that's what we focused on, because we knew 
that you could get tangled up. Our definition, you know, one man's freedom fighter is another man's terrorist. You can be fighting forever on the issue of Sunni Shia definitions of who's protecting whom, and, and you won't get anywhere. You literally will not get there. That's why we separated those activities. Now, that does, not, that does not reduce our commitment, as we've defined here again and again, to push back on every one of those activities. But it's easier to push back against an Iran that doesn't have a nuclear weapon than one that does. Senator Manchin has one question.